Hey fellow competitor dreamers, welcome to our episode 9 in our Dreaming to Compete series, The Path to Maximization. How to maximize our potential to achieve our dreams by working harmoniously with, our, with the body, mind and spirit. In this amazing conversation with my high school soccer coach from Warren, California, we dive deep with Coach Carlos Soto into how we can make our dreams come true by working on our fundamentals, eating, moving, sleeping, breathing and habits. Keep listening to the full conversation to get your own lessons on how to make your dreams come true and let us know in the comments below what they were. Hey, I'm JP and I'm here with Coach Carlo from Warren, California. He was a coach of my in high school soccer and we're just having a conversation about Coca-Cola and social media and all of those things that like we're not that we don't like so let's continue that conversation it was good going in a good di direction yeah uh, obviously we're both on the same page and the same frequencies as far as our health and um our mental health as well and what we're feeding our minds right we got we're talking about the social media but also the the coca-cola like you had mentioned it Coke came to sponsor you, you wouldn't take the sponsor because it's something that you don't believe in, which I appreciate that, right? A lot of people just go for the money or it, it benefits them in some way, but not really with their values, right? And I was telling you, yeah, I stopped drinking soda or Coke in middle school or like sixth grade just because it's not good for you, right? The best drink is out there, water and in the book, that's what I, I talk about. You, you had a chance to read the book. Yeah, I had the chance yeah. to read that great book. Like, this, like, if anyone can read it, like, it's a really short book that has a ton of information. It's like, I called it, like, it has five fundamentals, on, like, for life, which are eating, moving, sleep, breathing, and habits. And habits. Because, like, habits form everything else. Right. So, I really liked it. And, like, I preached it. I did some posts on social media about it. But I want to start that with that Coca-Cola. You said that you stopped drinking Coca-Cola in middle school. Why? Um, I don't know what got into me that early. But it was just, um, I got into a mindset of wanting to be healthy. Of wanting to, uh thrive and uh, and physical ability and i realized that coke is a good way to slow you down <laughs> the coca-cola the sugar the syrup all the stuff that's in there is not not good for your body so i just stopped during i stopped eating uh fast food like mcdonald's you know carl's jr all those uh types of fast food um and just started it and really went kind of extreme with it and was just really against McDonald's and anytime my parents wanted to eat McDonald's I would fight back and tell them no I don't want that that's garbage and then all these documentaries started coming out like the that supersized me have you ever seen that one I don't know I don't usually remember the name of the documentaries okay. probably probably not but yeah. yeah I've watched a couple of those yeah and those just kind of uh, made me even more extreme and and now I have a, a healthier balance as I'm older and I have my kids. I mean, my kids, we they, they've never, they don't eat. I mean, they've eaten McDonald's, but it's not something that's on our menu ever. Um, I actually taught them since they were little to call it McCaca. <laughs> <laughs> Just so they have that understanding like, yo, it's not good. It's, it's a crappy uh, food. Um, I call it fun. It's not food, it's fun, right? McDonald's is nutritional, it's fun, it tastes good, it, it's an experience. You get a happy meal and it's it's a fun, it's like candy, but does it have any nutritional value, right? That And so, you know, if we do have uh, any fast food type food, it's more like In-N-Out, uh, that's the fastest we'll go. You guys got In-N-Out and ATL yet? Nah, we don't. We're oh, waiting sorry. for it. <laughs> but I mean, it's good because I don't get to eat fast that fast food because I like it. So yeah, it's just I just get it when I go to California. Yeah, there you go. 
And so, you know, just trying to way back then, you know, got into that lifestyle of just trying to be conscious of, of what I'm eating, which is what the book is all about. Being conscious of what you're consuming, um, obviously through food, but uh, also with your mind and your spirit, right? That's where we were talking about the social media, right? Like, what are we consuming in our social media, right? And that's uh, one of the things I write on the on the in the book, the path to maximization is like, that's the feed, right? It's called the feed for a reason. We're feeding our mind as we're scrolling. And so how can we uh, use that as a tool rather than uh, not let it benefit us uh, mentally, right? And you were speaking, you, you want to talk a little about what you were saying about kind of Instagram and social media. Yeah, yeah, because I've been posting a lot of reels from these conversations and just of everything I learned, which it is a great way to, for first of all, for me to get the word out. And second of all, for me to really learn what I just learned, because the best way to learn is by teaching it to other people. And but I was saying that I'm thinking about stop, like stop doing that and like, getting out of Instagram, probably keep doing podcasts and putting some reels, like some shorts on YouTube, which I like more YouTube because it's YouTube in university. You can learn a lot of things on YouTube. Mm. While Instagram, I've never gotten into TikTok because I'm against it. But while Instagram, I'm a little bit against it, but I think that it's, like it, social media itself, it can be beneficial. My girlfriend has had the chance to learn things from Instagram. Like she's a videographer and photographer and there's some rules that teach her things. But after watching those videos, then what else? What do poor people normally do? They go and watch some of the things that are not so useful. So if you want to like just get a little bit into this, you can watch this social dilemma. That's basically what I'm thinking and my feelings about like, against towards social media. So I'm just thinking about stop using it. Yeah. The social dilemma. I love that documentary. It's a good informational, uh, it shows all the dangers of social media and how it has caused, um, you know, depression, uh, anxiety. And ever since, uh, well, it shows how the correlation of depression and anxiety is, and the increase of those has happened once, you know, the devices came out and social media has come out, especially with the youth and the, and, the, and especially teenage girls, which has a uh, heavy impact on me because I have two daughters and they're entering that teenage realm. And actually, before we got my daughter a phone, we actually watched The Social Dilemma. With her? I, yeah, I watched it with her, and uh, we talked about the movie, and and then uh, I, you know, uh, had a discussion about it, and then I also suggest anybody uh, who has kids or or in that realm of getting a phone to uh, watch that film and and educate them on like what is happening uh, with the devices and and social media. And also, uh, not just that, but like what it does to us, right? We're all on it. We're all somewhat addicted to it. And what does that look like for an adolescent? What does that look like for the youth? And as a teacher, right, I'm currently in my classroom, right? I'm seeing the youth coming in and there's a change of mindset right now. And there's a lack of motivation and there's... Um, it's increasing. I see it more and more. It's hard to uh, teach them because the attention span is so short and it's hard to compete, right? If I got to teach grammar in uh, Spanish, how do I compete with a device that's showing them everything they've ever wanted to see or all the flashes and lights and sounds and reels? And so it's an interesting thing, but on the on the flip side of that right and and we kind of get into this in the book the path to maximization we could be using these uh, devices and social media as a tool right we have the choice just like we have the choice of what we eat 
we have the choice of what we consume, what we look at. It's a little harder when it's shoved in your face and all these ads and algorithms are, are shooting out garbage to you, but you can click on a, on a reel. You can click on a post and say, Hey, I don't want to see this anymore. Or you can block an account, right? But it takes willpower. It takes action. It takes discipline. It takes a conscious mindset to be able to do that. And I guess what we're seeing is we're losing consciousness. We're, we're not conscious of our actions. We're not conscious of what we eat. We're not conscious of what we consume on the social media. And then that just becomes our habit. We never interrupt the habit loop and we never create new habits. And then day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, it becomes who we are. And now we're stuck in this habit of just doom scrolling and consuming whatever the world is giving to us and so the path to maximization is an effort to interrupt that to make us conscious to make us aware so that we can manifest our life in the best way possible in body mind and spirit and the the main thing there like you you said habits right it's the beginning of it it's interrupting that habit but first comes the desire first comes the will do you want to do it do you want to be be better? Do you want to feed yourself the right things? Because it's easy to just be fed whatever society is feeding you. It's it's a little more difficult to take the lonely road and to be conscious and to feed yourself with better material, better uh, a better feed, a better algorithm. But it's possible. So so with uh, social media, right? It's like it can be used as a tool. Yeah, there's garbage. There's a lot of garbage there, but it can be, if we're conscious, we can just use it and clean our feet and delete all the toxic pages um, and establish a feed that is healthy for us, that feeds us. We can follow uh, wise people. We can follow inspirational fitness coaches. We can follow good diet plans. We can and we can delete all the toxic violence or uh, sexual uh, images or uh, dirty jokes or, or you know, we can clean that feed up if we choose. But it is a choice. And that's what life is. It's all free will. It's all free choice. And you get to decide how you want to feed yourself in your mind and in your body and, and in your spirit. Um, so I like, you know, and with what you're pursuing, right, the uh, and, and you want to get the word out, right? I love this saying, it says, going into the darkness to shine light. When I was younger, I was in uh, a hardcore band. It's like heavy metal and it's like, Gar, and it's a dark place. And a lot of people think it's super evil and like uh, the devil's in there. And, but a lot of bands were actually Christian bands. And there, and one of the bands saying was, "We go into the darkness to shine light." And I, and that quote always stuck to me. Like, okay, like going into a dark place to to shine a little light, and then you don't, you you never know who needs that little bit of light. You never know who is scrolling through something, and then boom, you pop up on their feed with a positive message that then kind of triggers or or um, does something in their mind that makes them go into a different pattern or a different path and that's how I look at social media yeah it's crazy it's dark and I was just in the same way I don't like it um I got off of social media for a long time but now that as I wrote this book the path to maximization and I want to get the message out it's like I got to go in there I got to go and get uncomfortable and post things that are true to what I believe and and that I believe can help people and um and so that's where I'm at now in, in this phase of, of my life in this season is putting out the message in, in all those areas. So what got you to write the book of the Path of Mike Semisation? You know, I've been living this type of philosophy. I mean, you, when you were uh, one of my players in high school, right? Your junior year, was it that yeah. you were there? Right. Our philosophy in the program is um, body, mind and spirit. It's, uh, you know, work hard, stay humble and stay hungry. 
basically if we keep uh, those things in balance right the body the mind and the spirit we're able to perform at a high level and so i've been living that concept for you know a, a decade or or more um which has produced successful results as a, as a coach, as a teacher in my life. And I reached a point here where I was, uh, I think I spoke about it in the prefit, uh, the preface of the book where, um, I was teaching a summer school class, uh, for incoming ninth graders that were struggling in, in grades and behavioral issues and emotional issues and, I was given the class uh, and they basically told me to kind of create a curriculum where obviously they're learning how to take notes, they're learning study skills, but as far as how you're teaching them how to do that, it it was kind of free free reign. And I created a a quick curriculum of, okay, what do these kids need? What, uh, and how can I break it down for them so they can understand and see that they have full control of their success full control of their life and how they want it to go and and it came down to the habits came down to our diet exercise sleep and and um, breathing and those five concepts are all uh, interwoven with the body the mind and the spirit right the habits of the body habits of the mind habits of the spirit the diet of the body diet of the mind diet of the spirit exercise of the body mind spirit and um and you break it down like that in the book yeah and and i rolled it out like that in the class and saw how they were leaning in and they were listening and students have come back and said wow that that really helped to kind of shift my perspective and kind of see how i'm in uh, or how uh, to be more conscious and in those aspects and and that's what the path of maximization is. And and so I got to the point where I was like, well, if it, I was talking to other adults and, and friends of mine and, it, and telling them what I was kind of teaching. And they're like, wow, like I could take that class. That's, that's like a class that I should take. And so it just kind of kept me thinking in the back of my head. Like, and then last summer I was like, decided, hey, let me write this book. This is what I know. Let me put it out there. Let me see well, where this goes. It was just a... It was actually around this time during uh, Ramadan, um, uh, a student of mine was uh, practicing the Ramadan and fasting, and I, I was kind of speaking to her and asking her about what that, that means to her. I wanted to see if she kind of knew what she was doing or, or why she was doing it, and it was a, a great explanation, and, and it kind of inspired me to then start cleaning up my life even more a little bit. I started being more disciplined in other areas and fasting from different things. And then from that, it, uh, and, uh, there was more space for creativity. There was just more space for cre- uh, to, to create something. And in the summer, uh, in like June or July, that's when I started kind of writing this book and it flowed out because it's you know we read it it's a simple it's digestible but it's also something i've been living so it kind of just flowed out easily and um put it to pay uh put it to paper <laughs> paper even though it's the computer and yep. and, uh, and then yeah just just rolled it out and started creating content and and i've done a couple podcasts and i created a course as well and and here we are and how do you teach it different to those students that are struggling that to other people that are like doing good in life or how people say like they're successful to people that are not successful and want to improve? Is it the same way? Because you talk, you talked about simplicity, just making things simple, like that's digestible for everyone. But do you change anything? Yeah, I think it's always dialed into the individual because again the three concepts of the body the mind and the spirit there's always something to work on in in those three aspects so you could be very successful you could be making a lot of money but are you happy do you have joy how is your spirit and or you could be uh, very spiritual or have a very strong mind but how is your body how is your physical body are you fit 
Can you run three miles? Can you play a full soccer game? So for everybody, I feel like everybody is in a place where one might be better than the other, but the point of the path to maximization is to get all three of those components in a balanced uh, level, harmonious. And when that happens, that's when we're truly reaching our full potential. Um, so that's kind of the concept. Some people are in different uh, levels at different points uh, with the body, the mind, and the spirit. So it's kind of, you can read the book and dial it into, hey, what do I need an increase of? And you can go straight to the chapter and straight to the section of the spirit, right? Oh, exercise of the spirit. What can I do to increase my spiritual stamina, my spiritual intelligence, or the mind? I'm, I'm really weak mentally, or I, I feel depressed, or I'm constantly thinking negative. How, what are some habits that I could do or... What is a diet that I could feed my mind to help uh, balance that out and make it more positive? So, I mean, regardless of where you're at, if you're success and success, what does success mean, right? Uh, to to anybody, right? It could mean different things. For me, success is not just how much money you have or how much influence or how much power you have, but how happy are you? Do you have joy? Do you have time for yourself and your family? Are you uh, loving what you're doing? Are you loving life? That to me is success. And the path to maximization, that's what it's pointing to. To be joyous, to love life, and to have an impact in all parts of your life that you interact in, in your career, in your family, in your relationships. That's what the path to maximization is, is really about. And it all kind of dials down to the spirit um, at the end of the day. But it takes consciousness. It takes consciousness to be able to change that path to a path to maximization, to a path of joyful of a joyful life. How do you get conscious of life? How do you how can you be more conscious of your decisions and your choices and your habits? Practicing uh, meditation, practicing silence has really helped me. Taking moments to breathe and be thankful, taking every second and observing it in a childlike way where it's like, wow, this is amazing. I see a butterfly. I don't just, oh, cool, butterfly, go to my phone. No, it's like, where did that butterfly come from? It came from. A caterpillar and a cat, right? And so, being curious about life, um, being conscious in those moments, being fully present throughout the day. If you're with your friends, if you're, are you on your phone? Or is your mind somewhere else? Are you listening to your friend as they're speaking to you, or are you just waiting to say the next thing that you want to say? Are you conscious of your your thought process when you're in an environment or? or in a conversation and what type of thoughts are coming in are you are you reacting to certain situations or certain words or certain people or are you consciously acting right if someone is offending you in some way do you just react to defend your ego or are you conscious enough to know that that if that person is saying something negative it's probably because they have negativity inside of them they probably aren't happy with themselves and can you show compassion to them in that moment or are you just going to react and fight back with negativity also right so so consciousness is a practice an everyday practice every moment practice every second practice of being fully present being fully here And understanding that it, it, uh, the, your identity is in something deeper. And when you understand that your identity is in the spirit in something deeper that is infinite, then the thoughts that are coming aren't who I am. My feelings that are coming aren't me. These words that are being said to me shouldn't, uh, uh, if they're going towards my ego, that's fine. I'm not my ego because I'm conscious of who I am. 
and then so that were... so that identity that is something deeper is the identity that you define by yourself or what do you mean by that the identity comes from what we are right what are we we uh, we are spiritual beings having a physical experience we are spiritual we we are spirit in a body with with a mind and so the spirit comes from the creator of the spirit right god the infinite source of creation the divine and so when i understand that when i understand who i am what who uh, my true identity my true self which is the spirit then that's what i am aligned with and so every action and every thought should be pulled from the spirit right um which makes me conscious so when i'm conscious of that connection to the most high then the rest of my life becomes a path that is lived with that understanding so my habits have to change if i know where i come from if i know my true self my diet has to change if i want to honor this temple right this body that is housing my spirit i have to take care of my body my temple through exercise i have to be because i want to honor my true self my spirit my um sleeping patterns need to be good as well to regenerate the body and also my mind to be healthy so that i can honor who i am and the breathing the breath breathing in the life source breathing in the oxygen and appreciating every moment of life that i have here on earth at this moment through breathing consciously and then i go into the book about breathing in through your nose and what it does to our body and how it um is the the breathing in through our nose is the filter of of the air and helps to reduce diseases and you guys got to go read the book cuz it gets pretty uh, in detail in, uh, in that section but also in with every breath we are given life and so every breath that we take is an opportunity to be thankful to have gratitude and to increase the spiritual consciousness and the awareness of of who we are which then puts us in a conscious space of living which will again uh, impact all those five things that that we've been talking about the habits the diet the exercise the sleep and the breathing i don't know if that answered your question yeah 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 it's just i think first of all consciousness like how we can become more consciousness is just by slowing down because life is too hectic life is too fast nowadays we're doing this now what else what's next what's next let's just take a moment to slow down breathe and then our identity spirit spirit that's it yeah um, so where do you want to go with now like what's your dream right now <clears throat> it's a good question um i i see myself uh, you know speaking um sharing this message and again that might be through just through my teaching subject or or through coaching um but i i i also would like maybe to do some public speaking um in some different areas and some opportunities have kind of come about for me to do that to kind of speak on you know what i feel is important for us as as a humanity to to increase to to be better and to grow and more of our understanding of what is important our body our mind and and spirit um so whatever that may look like um in the future uh, i see uh, i guess my dream would be to let this go and grow and the course to grow and to the for the message to grow so that then i can pour my full uh life into it and and work at this only um 
and then I can create a better schedule for myself so I could wake up, go to the beach, surf a little bit, ride my bike, and then spend time with my family and then kind of work when I want to work. I guess that's everyone's dream, right? That the financial freedom to kind of really live and enjoy and do what you really want to do. Not that I don't enjoy my life now. I'm very blessed and I love my schedule, but hey, if I could be even more independent and and financially independent through this, then why not? While, while spreading a good message, um, then why not? So I guess that would be my dream. Yep. I like it. And how are you living that bad? Because it's hard. Like, it's hard to, for a lot of people, including me, when, when we have a goal, a certain goal, we're just doing everything that to be able to get to that goal and we forget to enjoy the bad. Yeah, I've had to be conscious about that too because I've, I've had uh, you know a couple days where I'm trying to be in control and trying to manifest this a little too much and then I'm during my moments of meditation and prayer and and reading and listening right I feel and that you know it's kind of like planting the seed you plant a seed right here's the seed the path to maximization here's some content right here's a little bit of water and you got to kind of let that seed grow. So kind of letting go, um, letting go of the results is what I'm leaning towards. Letting go of results and just continuing to till the soil, continuing to put out content, continuing to network and have conversations, but letting go of the results and letting letting the creator kind of do what? the creator is going to do letting god take over just like with the seed you plant the seed but you don't dig it up and check every moment to see if there's roots or if there's a plant coming out you just plant it um and so i'm kind of leaning towards that plant the seed let it do its thing in due time if i'm patient if i'm doing the right thing which i believe i am then i gotta have faith i gotta believe i gotta keep the energy keep the momentum trust and forget about the results because the results might look completely different to what I have in my mind. And if it doesn't happen the way that I want it to happen, then I might be disappointed. So it's kind of just the con the consciousness of just here it is, plan it, let it go, and, and be happy during the process and enjoy the process. Because what takes away the joy of the of the process is looking at the result or wanting the result too early um, or wanting the result to be a certain thing or wanting it to be a certain way. Now, I'm not saying don't have goals. I'm not saying don't be, don't have a plan. I have all those things. I have, a, I have goals. I have a plan. Um, but also being open to, hey, what if these the plan changes or what if the result changes and being okay with that as well. Um, so that's kind of what I'm learning and trying to apply and just uh, again enjoying the process enjoying being with my family with my kids enjoying teaching enjoying coaching um and just every day by day do do what needs to be done till the soil pull some weeds pour some water let the sun shine and then it'll manifest itself and it takes consciousness to be able yes. to to get away and know that you're in that moment that when you're thinking about that goal and you're not present, just be conscious and be present. Yes. Okay. And I know you get a go, you get a wrap up and to be able to wrap up, I want to ask you two questions. What is the definition of a dream? The definition of a dream is like a like a sleeping dream or like a a gold dream a gold dream so it's funny because right our through the creator right we've been given a creative mind um, and we've been given the ability to create and manifest right everything that we see out in this world is a is a creative 
manifestation, right? God is a creator. God is creative, right? That's why art is super important and all this technology that we have, the technology that we have to do this, right? This was a dream for, for somebody. Somebody visualized this before they made it happen. But we don't think about that because it's just right here in front of us. We just use it. So what is a, the definition of a dream? I guess it's a vision. I guess it's it's a it's a divine inspired idea. It's a uh, it's a desire, a desire that's put into us um, through the Most High, through the the infinite divine source. And a, a dream is what well, again how we what we want to see in our lives and and make happen, which we completely can we can do make our dreams happen through focus, through being conscious, through meditating and, and doing the proper steps to get there. Great. And what does it mean to compete? To compete? Oh, I love that question because I'm I'm a competitor. I love to win. I, I'm sure we played against each other. Probably I got in some training sessions with you guys and I'm trying to win every game. I try to win my uh, a monopoly game against my kids. If my if we're playing basketball, I'm not letting my kids win. Like I want to win. Um, and some people think like that's the ego and that's uh, narcissism and all this. I'm like, look, it's a game, right? And games were made to be played. And if we're gonna play a game, we might as well win. Uh, and and that type of drive that you have to want to win is, is what's gonna give you the drive to succeed. Right. Um, so to compete to me is to play the game. It doesn't define who I am. It doesn't define my identity. It doesn't make me uh, more valuable or less valuable. But while I'm on this earth and I'm playing this game of a career, I'm going to compete. I'm going to compete to succeed in my career. While I'm playing this game of soccer, I'm going to compete and I'm going to want to win this game. I'm not just going to play it just to lose. I'm going to try to win. And if I don't win, hey, good game. Unlucky. We'll try it again next time. So to compete to me is um, to give your best effort, to give your best effort, to practice your mental strength, your physical strength, and your spiritual strength, to put it to the test, to get the result of, of winning. I love it that. It doesn't define you. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I have my name is Juan Pablo Giraldo. So my acronym is JPG. So in Spanish, I my identity will be jugar para ganar, which mm -hmm. is win to play. And yeah. winning in competition, I think I think about it the same way as you. And if we're not winning to, if we're not playing to win, then we're not playing at, a, at our best ability. We're not giving right. the best of ourselves. We're not maximizing yeah our abilities and our potential 100 percent. so it was a great conversation coach yeah for sure and it's great to see you again i love your bath and let's just stay in contact yeah for sure good talking to you too brother i love seeing you doing what you're doing and uh, succeeding in all that you're doing i saw it from way back then and in, in high school, and I got no doubts that you're going to continue to win, succeed, and compete at the highest level, brother. So, Thank you. Got thank it. you. And so, everyone, dream to compete. Own your dreams by competing and compete by owning your dreams. <laughs>